does this conversation help you feel better in any way about this vast and scary topic or does it just raise more questions no it just makes me freak out even more because we Damn just it. talked about it for an hour and a half <laughs> Two lifelong friends document and share their personal stories as they seek financial independence and to retire early. One reaches fire in 2020 during a global pandemic, inspiring the other to play catch up. This is Two Sides of Fi. There's another sort of tier of cost decisions and it's like related to taxes too, right? I mean, it doesn't sound like taxes really shape. I mean, you're living in, in a pretty tax heavy state. But, you know, there are certain states that have no income tax. You know, you yes. got to be thinking about property tax if you're going to own something like, how, how, I mean, it sounds like that didn't really factor into the equation, but I have to imagine people watching this, especially if you have a business like me and you plan yeah. on, you know, continuing to earn through passive sources after you retire, you know, taxes definitely have to enter the equation. Well, they, they did. They were on my spreadsheet. I, I looked at um, sales tax, um, uh, income tax, how retirement assets are treated. And yes, California does not do well in most of those things. However, on property tax, it has very strange laws, prop whatever, from the 70s that peg um, where property taxes can go and what happens if houses get passed down in families. There's all sorts of weird stuff. What it means at the end of the day is California doesn't get nearly the revenue it should from property tax that most states do, and that's why our we were bankrupt you know, a handful of years ago. But anyway, property tax, while it's not awesome, is way better on a percent basis than anywhere I've ever lived. So property tax, not bad. However, the part of the state we live in actually does have uh, is on the lower end of the um, sales tax uh, part of the spectrum. So it's not great. We do have sales tax. We do have income tax as well. But honestly, when we looked at all the states that had the favorable tax treatment, with the exception of maybe Texas, which yeah. fails the ocean rule um, that where Gulf we want to look anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. Austin is not exactly on the ocean. Um, you know, that was it. And so, believe me, I tried to push those tax favorable <laughs> states early on in the process, and I'm yeah. not going to name any of them to avoid offending anybody. But yeah. let's just say Lori was uninterested in exploring those options. No, I got you. But so they were there. How, but, how about yeah, the idea of like retirement income? Yeah, I mean, we we looked at all that. I've got those lists of you yeah. know most friendly states to retire in from a, a taxation of retirement assets. Yeah, yeah, California's not great about that, and. Um, but, but I think flip, for people that are considering, uh, they should consider this. I mean, it should be in the, in the rubric of it should. things to consider. And especially if you are trending to more toward lean fire, like it's a good yeah. point of leverage. And if you're someone who is just as happy in Florida as you might be in North Carolina, you know, yes. I mean, it, it could make a, a lot of sense right there because, you know, as we've talked before, just being able to change the amount that you're withdrawing from your portfolio by a small amount yeah. can have a pretty big difference in terms of, you know, how successful that portfolio Absolutely. performs over time or, you know, your standard of living. And I, I, I mean, it's definitely something we're considering cause I don't, yes. Yeah. Anyway. No, it, it's, it's a really important point. You know, my wife and I are also of the mindset that we want to choose some, we wanted to choose somewhere that we could see ourselves living long term you know, 20 years or more, but we're equally honest with ourselves that we have no idea what we're going to think five years. Yeah. 10 you can years always walk the decision now. back. Right. <laughs> so even if we'd say, you know, for many people, okay, those aspects of where you chose to live in central coast of California are on the higher end of the cost spectrum from a variety of things. It's only going to go down from here. So we built our plan and our budget around living here. So it could only get better. But you also, somewhere else. but like your first, your sequence of returns risk are highest in those first couple of years. So you're right. Kind of, kind of flawed decision making there. <laughs> I don't know if it's flawed decision making. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> that we, from our discussion on withdrawal rate. And I know you were low. The whole episode on it. We're low on the withdrawal rate. <laughs> One of the things that I think is hard to really figure out from just, you know, 
throwing a dart at the map and looking at or envisioning places, you know, like at one point we said, Oh, San Diego would be great. Right. And, and I visited, I visited there and it's fine, but standing in that space and visiting that place, I was kind of like, well, I don't really see myself here. Um, part of this, a big part of this decision is who you connect with and friends and community. Like, yeah, as I think about uprooting ourselves from this place where we do have, you know, friends and, you know, a community that we feel a part of, how do you figure out what that looks like if yeah. you completely uproot? And, you know, the, the, the strange space you find yourself in is you're not going back to work, which is, I think for people our age, you know, mid to late forties, like that's kind of you have an established friend group because of where yeah. you're working right? right? or where your totally. spouse is working in my case. And uh, we're finding that really hard to, to figure out what that looks like. How, ha- how did you guys think about that when you were visiting places? It might have been a more comfortable, although still scary thought for us to kind of uproot and create new friend networks because to your earlier point, I have moved so many times for work reasons. So, you know, but you're also correct 100 percent that if you don't have that work plate, that workplace to build a new friend network, that's a little scary. So in terms of how we approached it from a, a, you know, visiting places perspective, the first thing we did, I, I think, was realize that we should really honor that feeling we get when we visit a place for the first time. If we give it a thorough once over, you know, spend a few days, check out areas and it doesn't fe- you know, we're not immediately feeling like, oh, there's probably this is probably us. Then we took it off the list. And but if we did feel good and we got a kind of a good vibe from talking to people that live there, you know, go visit a school, just see how people interact. We talk a lot uh, when we're vacationing places about that feeling of like something fits, uh-huh. right? And the kind of vibe you get from people. And I think one of the things that made the area we landed in just fit really well is, well, there's a couple things. Uh, just kind of the, the, the way that people seemed pretty down to earth. Right. And a, and, a, and a big diversity of people, you know, from people who are been here forever, multi-generation through, um, you know, much newer people who moved here to, you know, help build the wine industry. That's so huge here now. Um, the other thing I, I think that, that we think a lot about is from like a activities and hobbies perspective. And I'll, I'll just pick on a couple simple ones um, and, and maybe a little greedily things that I really care about. Right. The wine industry and the beer industry are huge here. And Lori and I are very interested in both of them, not just from a, a pure hedonistic perspective, but <laughs> from a, you know, uh, working in those, you know, doing part time work, maybe, or, you know, volunteer work or, you know, whatever, you know, Lori and I both uh, like those businesses a lot. And she's already working part time at a brewery now doing their lab work for them because she has a science background just like I do. And I'm currently working with I haven't even told you this yet. I pitched an idea involving beer education to a local brewery here and and made a video for them and everything. And we're going to talk about this weekend. So I think knowing that this area has that as a central thrust of activity, especially the wine industry, but man, there's a, there's a top 10 brewery here too. Um, it was really appealing to us because we knew what we could, you know, meet people in that industry, have a common interest, right? Which is what all of us look for in friends, right? Common interests, things we care about and can identify with together. So that was something that uh, was attractive, but also it's a, you know, it's a, it's a outdoorsy region, right? That we've got tons of coastline. We've got lots of, you know, biking and hiking and, you know, the, you, you meet people through those pursuits and, uh, you know, it, it, we had a feeling from the start that those things that we cared an awful lot about basically is what I'm trying to say. We were, we weren't going to have a problem finding people who shared those interests, even if they didn't live on our street, you know, in our town, no problem at all. Yeah. So, well, I'll see. It'll be interesting to hear Laura comment on that because I mean, I think it, any place you live, you know, you, if you're threading into an established community, like it's hard, yeah. it's just naturally harder to, you know, forge friendships and yeah. So sure. definitely look for common interests. Like, you know, one of the things I was thinking was, okay, are there places that have like big five communities or something like that? Because yeah, that seems like a natural fit. And also perhaps a group of people who are similar in age, you know, and not that 
age has to correlate exactly, but no. you know, sometimes that's a helpful sort of entree point of <laughs> making friends, you know, sure. sh shared pasts and, you know, common histories, but anyway. For sure. Well, you know, and I think the other thing I would throw in there is sometimes you got to like take a step to create a nucleus that a friend group can build around. So, you know, sharing, you know, for us, and this is going to come back to beer again, right? But it's also something really important to Lori and I, right? We've both been brewing 20, 25 years. Just sharing beer with a couple of people on our block created an opportunity to not just talk about that, but I'm going to be, you know, brewing beer with one of the guys pretty soon. We talked about having a bottle share when we were at a winery with somebody who we're now friendly with. And that ended up having a group of five people and this was COVID. So we're like outside in the driveway in the winter with a, you know, a, uh, a fire pit, but we're sharing beer and meeting people. And you know, that, that, so, I mean, you create those opportunities. So one thing I don't have a sense of yet that I, I would be interesting to know is how much have you narrowed down? Or do you have, so you said uh, I'm willing to commit to the U S but I suspect even when you hadn't yet committed, are you down to like a subset of states or regions? Like how big is the problem space still at this point? It, um, I mean, it's coasts, it's both coasts. Um, okay. but like you guys, you know, that I have the kind of sunny disposition, <laughs> so, well, not the sunny disposition, but, uh, no, it's not, I mean, it's not the first word I would think of when I think of you, but, uh, <laughs> not because I, you're grizzled. I have the penchant, penchant for more sun than, than Laura does. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, California would be nice. That's definitely on the table. Um, okay. you know, we've talked about Arizona. That is a little harder for me because it's kind of landlocked. Um, yeah. Laura would be in the dead center of the country, I think, as she likes water, but I, I'm not sure she'd choose it over another thing. Like she's really into biking. So, you know, yeah. Colorado has a lot of things. Um, you know, Southeast has been appealing for a lot of reasons. There are a few reasons why may, it might not be. I mean, we talked about Virgin Islands. I would love to be in the Caribbean. That would be fantastic. But then I start to think about not only cost, but then healthcare and, sure. you know, storm season, you know, we talked about Puerto Rico. That's a little rough around the edges for us, but I mean, yep. yeah. So it's like, it's still okay. pretty large and still a little it bit, is. bit dreamy. I mean, my trawler's looking pretty good right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do. I love the trawler idea. <laughs> um, I, it's, it's so appealing in a lot of ways, but I also, I think what it does for me is it speaks to an, an, an innate desire to move around a lot, <laughs> not and, make and a decision. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually, I, I find a lot of appeal in that idea of let's, I don't know, let's say three months, six months moving around. Yeah. Um, Lori and I, we have a, a strong intersection on that, but it's not a hundred percent because she also believes firmly and I'm, I'm willing to side with her on this, even though I, I haven't experienced that. I bet she's right. Having a, a place that you call home yeah. that's, you know, a home base you can come back to, to have your stuff, whether you're renting out or not renting it out to your discussion before, that's probably really valuable. So I think she would say, yeah, I, I know she'll say, I want to have a house that's ours and be able to do six week, three month, whatever stays and then come back. Right. Um, she loves that idea. And, and I like it. And if you think about it, you, you talked about geo arbitrage earlier, that can still work with owning a house, whether you rent it out or not, because if your other expenses that are not your rent or your mortgage go down substantially when you're somewhere else, even including the housing costs, well, then you're ahead. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. And if you add renting into it and we chose to buy somewhere that has a very strong vacation and or other short and long term rental options. Well, it just makes me feel that much better about buying a house as opposed to renting because we didn't talk about that question. Uh, on you and I yet on this conversation, but we did struggle with that idea of should we just rent because we're we don't maybe we shouldn't commit yet because we don't really know and we're making this big weighty decision. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys land on that? Have you always have you gone back and forth, thought one way or the other? Is it oh has it always been renting because you already own a place? Where do you guys land? Yeah, I don't need another house, man. It's just more headaches for me. <laughs> so yeah, that's the way I, I like feel that. about it. I don't want to own any more brick and mortar assets. Uh, nice. you know, I mean, but here it's I go again, because I wanted a trawler. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, it just feels watery. So brick. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, man. I, maybe, I, maybe I'm really back to that now because that, 
Like that actually solves a lot of problems, doesn't it? You heard it here, folks. Eric is back <laughs> on the trolley. I had a friend who lived on a, a houseboat in, in Boston because uh, oh, he, yeah. could, he couldn't because he could afford, um, you know, a place in Cambridge or wherever on the yep, outskirts. do that in the Bay Area too. And it's, boy, it was an interesting lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> it looked a little tough actually in Boston because <laughs> yeah. I visited on a day, boy, it must've been like early spring and he had the heater going on that thing and it was still freezing cold. And, uh, oh, really? you know, it's like this and the, like bumping up against the dock. <laughs> it's like, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking myself out of this again. <laughs> well, I think of those kinds of things as means to an end, right? Whether you're a lean fire guy living in an RV in yeah. the Bay Area, yeah. you know, or living on a boat, you're trying to save money and, you know, while you're trying to earn, you're trying to maximize your income while reducing your spend. <laughs> so that sounds like a good temporary thing, but maybe not a long term solution. Dude, you know, and he <laughs> he got stuck there because both of his engines broke down. He had to get the thing towed oh. out. <laughs> It was crazy. Man. Oh, gosh. It worked out though. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. I mean, he renovated the thing. It was kind of cool, actually. What he did, okay. he turned it into a portfolio piece for because he was an architect. Oh, wow. um, okay. But yeah, I don't know. There is an appeal to it, that's for sure. And yeah. uh, that that idea of just being nomadic, whether that's, and Laura has talked that. about, you know, okay, well, if we consider doing that on water, uh, where we know a lot less about that whole domain, why wouldn't we consider doing that on land and just, you know, sinking a certain amount of money into, and even if we just said, okay, I don't know what those things cost. Those like Mercedes, RVs yeah, or whatever. Sprinter van. Yeah. So what, what does oh, something God. like that cost? Is it like a hundred grand? At, at most. Okay. I mean, I know people doing it for a lot less and okay. have what looks like a pretty nice setup. Now you're down a rabbit hole that I spent like so much time in. <laughs> oh, you went there, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, it's still appealing to me. All right. right? Well, Especially that's interesting. Especially once, you know, once our daughter is in or certainly through college, that nomadic lifestyle to me sounds pretty appealing. So, I, oh, my gosh, I've done so much RVE research, Sprinter van, like all that stuff. You know, one of the things that I was thinking about <laughs> with the trawler was like, hey, it'd be great if I could just rent one of these things. But when I was talking to my client who's really into boats, he's like, yeah, they don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, they don't? Think of the damage you can do with those <laughs> With those yeah, boats. I mean, you could basically drive that thing out to sea and just be gone. <laughs> right? Yeah, anything involving the ocean. Uh, it's just gone forever. I mean, Hurricane. If, if we can't find jumbo jets that go down in the ocean, I think your trawler is easy to make disappear. Dude, I'm just picturing like the compass on this thing going haywire, and I'm just like headed off to Bermuda. I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah, believe me, that's exactly what I think about. But I'm also someone that can't navigate themselves out of a cardboard box without a GPS. That's right, you can't. So, yeah, no, I can't. But I was thinking, I like no with with the RV. We could totally rent. I mean, you can rent those things, right? Oh, not, it's a whole thing. There's there's websites just for doing that. But not the cool, not the real cool ones. Probably the ones that that you and I are thinking of. But like, that's that's the kind of lifestyle that you could try on for a little while. You can, and uh, we have looked at that stuff. Like, what does what does doing a really long road trip look like? Because Laurie and I have never taken one, right? Yeah, uh, I think we mentioned it before. I've never taken more than two weeks off in a row. No way. And travel. Uh, and, and with COVID, we still haven't, but uh, we're going to. Uh, pretty soon, we're going to do uh, uh, five <coughs> weeks away, but it's going to be visiting family and friends. So that's pretty low key. That's not trying to be out on your own with an RV. But I love the idea that you can rent vehicles of all different classes and even some Sprinter vans I've found. Uh, so you can try on at least something that would be like that. And I, I certainly would recommend that to people thinking yeah. about that because I don't know how many people are like me. But it's so easy for me to get wrapped up in these romantic <laughs> ideas of, and you just watch these YouTube videos, whether it's oh, yeah. about that Swedish family living in the forest in a cabin. Watched I, it. I, oh man, that's an amazing channel. Watched it. Or some, you know, somebody you know who's worked out how to live in a Sprinter van and has been doing it for a year. Which again, somebody I also know. It's so easy to get wrapped up in that stuff and and like just insert yourself in it and be like, I could totally do this <laughs> without really thinking through all the things that are positively terrible about it. Here's what and, I'm. Yeah. Here's yeah. one thing I'm picturing: like walking into the van in the morning. What does that smell like? It smell. I mean, you know what I mean? You've been in this van for three weeks. Ugh. 
<laughs> I just well, know what that smells like. I get so wrapped up in the monument, what feels like a monumental decision. The finality like, of it. Yeah, like it's somehow permanent. Yeah. Like, well, I get one more chance to do this. <laughs> and if I don't do it right, oh, screw you. If you, you buy a house, die. yeah. If you buy a house, though, it's a little more, I mean, it's not exactly like we couldn't sell that thing. Well, I don't know. Maybe we could. <laughs> it's a good real estate market, but still, it's, you know, it's not really a liquid asset. Yeah. And yeah, that's fair. And I did think about that too. And I, it does give me a little comfort knowing that while no real estate market is certain by any stretch, I, I don't consider it an investment. We are in an area that has had a great run over the last 15 years. And so I feel at least slightly more confident about that. But I definitely got to the point where I started to feel a lot better about the yeah. fact that this is not a permanent decision. It's the next decision. Change. Yeah, it's the next decision. We yeah. can change our mind. Every time we've thought, this thing was going to be the something we did or cared about for five years or more, those priorities change, right? And whether those are changed for you, like there's something you need to deal with or go help somebody or be with family, or you just decide to do something differently. So we've tried to treat this in that way. Um, yes, we were very thoughtful about it. I've mentioned the process we went through, but we stopped stressing about it. Or like, I, I stopped stressing about it because <laughs> I don't think Lori – stressed yeah. about it. He took yeah. it very, very pragmatic about the whole thing. It's funny and there's that, something to learn from that. Yeah. I, it's funny that she doesn't stress about that. I wonder if sometimes if, if one person in the relationship is owning all of the stress and anxiety, if the other one feels free to kind of just <laughs> let the other person <laughs> own it. Cause that, that, that's the way it works in my house for the most oh, part. Okay. I mean, the housing yeah. decision for us has been stressful, I would say, but it's helpful to think about it you know, frame the decision in that way, because it does, it does relieve some of the pressure. And I, I tried to tell Laura what we're selecting for are options, right? Optionality options. are, are key. That, that's key. And there's sure. nothing saying like, okay, a family's far away and something happens or, you know, they could come to us too. Like that's an option, you know? And so yeah. it's, it's helpful to kind of, just put all the balls out there on the table and just say, if this, then that, if this, then that. And if you have enough options, almost anything is, is solvable, uh, Correct. no matter where you're, you're living. Um, but yeah, definitely. So order of operations here, cost what's next cost. And then I would say, figure out your non-negotiables, the things you're not going to bend on when you choose an area, right? If Three hours from an ocean is prowl one. You are not going to consider somewhere in Kansas, yep. right? You got to know those prowl ones and then figure out all of those other lifestyle things. And, and, and f how do you rank them? Right. If you want to live in a really dog friendly town and you decide that's important, well, you better, you know, honor that right distance from airports, right? Access I hope to that didn't make, education. did that make your list dog friendly? dog friendly was on the list. Yeah. Oh my God. Lori cares a lot about that. When we travel or when we go to like wineries or restaurants and sit outside, she wants it to not be like, you know, parts of Napa where they're like, no dogs are allowed ever, oh. even if it's outdoors. Dude. So, you know, it's not like we have a, 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 you know, a fleet of dogs. We have one 12 pound dog, but you know, we like bringing her places. So we do. <laughs> that was on the list. Right. And my, my, one of my daughters, I just they, lost they, a lot of respect for you, man. I understand. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that you had any left, but you know, one, one thing that was really important to my daughter is she wanted it to be different from where we've been living for the last eight years. Right. You know, experientially different, not the same stuff, just a few hours away. And this did pass that test. Thankfully. Different swings. Cause it was pretty important. Well, she's 15. There's not that many swings in her life anymore, but, uh, yeah, you don't know that operations, um, for us, we got it. We got that list down to about twelve to fifteen. Oh my god! Before really? Before we started, before we started visiting, <laughs> That's and then crazy. we chose five, I think five places to visit. So where'd you visit? And, Are you comfortable sharing? So Palm Springs area was one. Um, I can't uh, believe so that made the list for cost. Did. Yeah, cost yeah, yeah. wise, it was it so. One of the things I did, and I I'll, will use an image of my matrix, I, I think, as a, as a pop-up. We graded every attribute by a, a one, two, or a three. And it made a nice color code, right? Just red, yellow, green, and, and also a quantitative score. Because I like the visual, 
And I also like being able to rank things. And so Palm Springs did very well on our list, except for housing below 550,000, which was our top end. Um, it was yellow because there was inventory in some of the towns, but it was much more limited. So um, that was one of the strikes against it. Um, part uh, area around San Diego. There was a couple towns there that that we were potentially interested in. Um, parts of Sonoma County in California. Um, I'm looking at the list right now. Um, I have visited Bend, uh, Oregon before. We've both visited Hood River, so we didn't do a follow-on visit for any of those. We took them <laughs> off the list for other reasons, right? The sunshine test, for example, for Hood River. Uh -huh. Bend is the sunniest place in Oregon. If you want to maybe consider it, it's just not how, near, near the ocean. How many days? <laughs> I don't. I don't have the numbers on my chart. Um, <laughs> it's yellow for numbers of sunny days in a row. I don't remember the exact number. Is that middle of the um, road, or is that? What's the scale? Middle of the road. Okay. Middle of the road. Yep. Um, and then there were a couple other places in Northern California and then a few places in Arizona, like Sedona. Obviously, that would fail the the ocean test. Yeah. But it ticks so many other boxes on our list. Okay. So, yeah, those are some of the places. Cool. One of the other things I didn't mention that was in favor of us staying in California, at least in the near term, was access to the university system. So we talked right. about college savings and, you know, my daughter knows that our strategy included she can choose wherever she wants to go. Uh, if she chooses an in-state public university, that's going to be fully funded. Yeah. Right. That cost is taken care of by the 529 we set up years ago. If she chooses uh, an out-of-state public university, well, maybe that's mostly covered or, or three quarters covered, depending on the state. If she chooses private, it's going to be no more than half. And so... Just giving her the option of going to a UC school, uh, and it's a huge system and it's a well-regarded one, we thought was a great reason to stay in California, at least for the time being. At least it's certainly something strongly in favor of staying in California. So yes, despite some of the cost equation, we did have that as a, as a, a positive on our list. Does this conversation help you feel better in any way about this vast and scary topic or does it just raise more questions no it just makes me freak out even more because we Damn just it. talked about it for an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> i really i really tried man <laughs> no it's helpful to i mean if nothing else it it puts all the issues out there and i i mean the part of me that starts freaking out most is like oh yeah there's six months of our life that we don't have covered in our future budget which i haven't done <laughs> <laughs> so well, there's I that mean, you know and you can work on it yeah, yeah exactly but i mean you, you know you need to figure out it's not so bad to figure out your upper bounds right because you have done work on the softer stuff right the how much do you want to spend on you know oh, yeah. dining out and you know travel and those questions are are way vaguer and involve a lot of discussion, I think. And certainly if you've put big padding around them, which I think you eventually got to from our, our earlier episode, hey, then you're that much farther ahead. Yeah. Um, so just figure out what your cushion is around your monthly rent that you're willing to pay. And, and if this is solely a rental question, well, that's a lot different because now property tax doesn't matter. It's built right. into the rental cost. So yeah. great. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> when do I have I, to make this decision? <laughs> Well, if you're renting and you already own a house, you don't even have to make it by the time where you retire as long as you don't find yourself in the position of we didn't budget enough because suddenly you decide you want to live in Hong Kong, which I think is way off the list. Yeah. And and from a cost perspective should be off the list. I mean, from an op if we go back to optionality, I should be making it sooner rather than later. Like I shouldn't even be waiting a year. To, it would help. A year out. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the benefits in your case to working it out is – the, the sooner you get to a region and even a, a part of a state, that means it's just more time for you to figure out like a lot of the nuances about this town versus that town, you know, to do some stays there. You know, it's, it's pretty low cost, low risk and just figure out what feels good to you <laughs> because, you know, we didn't necessarily get to that level. I mean, yes, in this area, in the central coast, we looked pretty hard at the three towns closest to where we thought we wanted to be but who's to say there's not three other towns you know farther south in the county maybe they would have been a better fit yeah i don't know and so far we haven't found that to be the case i don't have any buyer's remorse about it but if we had decided a year before we started looking for a house 
well, maybe we would have explored even more in yeah. this county. Um, so we didn't do that. So yeah, to your point, narrowing it down earlier is probably, I mean, it can only, you can argue it's only going to be better.